Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Josh Pizarro, born and raised in New York City. My story is different from most. After 10 years working in the post office, I realized I wasn't happy. So I decided to quit and go after my dream of becoming a real estate entrepreneur. While on my journey, I have encountered many struggles that have taught me the resilience needed in business. This is my story. Now I bring you stories from other entrepreneurs and their hustle to success. This is the JTB Podcast. What up, what up, everybody? Welcome back to the J-Team Brand Podcast. Uh, first episode of 2019. Yeah. We're bringing you in. So, uh, right. Definitely, mm-hmm. definitely. So I want to introduce my audience to you, Lydia. Lydia Cutco, who... I'm sorry. You gave me your your title beforehand, but I'm going to let you okay. kind of introduce yeah, yourself to the audience. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lydia Cutco, and I'm the founder of Reframe, which is um, a... Uh, a program at Rikers where we teach we first started with men um, we teach them art handling and job training skills um, and then the next component that I'm working on is um, job placement um, I also um, my day job is and uh, something I started a long time ago is an uh, art consulting firm so okay. I help um, so you brought the art into your, what you're founding in regards to working with the right exact inmates and whatnot so speak a little bit about that because I found that super interesting by the way because yeah. I mean obviously it's not e- the easiest transition from becoming you know being a prisoner to now society yeah so now you know helping them along with you know the art and the creative side of things so like how did you form that relationship well so I mean I um I'll answer that question, I think, a little different way. Um, What I have been doing for years, and so just so everyone knows, an art consultant, Mm -hmm. and at least my practice of it is that I work with art collectors. Um, That's obviously one. I help them find art for their spaces. Um, And that there's there's different sides of art collecting. There's art buying. Art buying is more about finding something to fit a specific need. Okay. Um, Like you know that wall is blank above that couch, that kind of thing. And then collecting is also a little bit of a deeper practice, and it's um it's more involved with really getting involved in our community. Mm -hmm. You know, it's coming through a point of view that is um you know connecting back to the arts connecting back to history of art um connecting to many different facets so it's 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 the whole life of um and the relationship of a person with their art okay I and mean, there's many ways of describing it yeah, and yeah. i can say it a different way every single day but um and then also i work with artists i consult them so on, the relationship with um the the inmate um foundation that you created yeah how did how did that form like, okay so i so to, at, with my consulting together? firm which i've run for about t- 10 years and i'm oh, still sweet. doing it yeah nice. so i'm still i started it from the ground up and i i made that into a, you know a really um multifaceted business where i help different different types of um communities within the art world both artists and collectors and then also businesses okay um you know do residential lobbies things like that i i've met a lot of really interesting people Mm. um and one of the things that i was having the disconnect with is that you know artists art is supposed to be within the community and serve the community and it has um it has a larger impact than just what's happening to the, you know, in someone's home. Okay. Um, and I wanted to bring all the people together that I noted to serve communities that are underserved. Yeah. Definitely. And I also wanted to bring the blue chip art community, which is, you know, the sort of the philanthropic side of the art world. Sweet. Um, into sort of the, the um, prison reform kind of conversation. Okay. Um, and offer up um, our resources. Okay to this community and so, so it's not long, an art therapy yeah. program it's it's more focused on um entrepreneurship career services which is great yeah which Obviously, is really great even like the art curating part of it you know to be able to come out and create a business around yeah that, you know amongst yourself I, and i love the idea just you know kind of what you so how long have you been running the program for so i've been running the program for maybe three years i, I okay. can't 
quite give you the exact date, but um, oh, I mean, I started in May of like, maybe it was 2016. Do you have any stories of like inmates that came out of the program and like it just had a major impact? And well, so that's where we're getting to. I have um, stories of making a major impact inside. Sweet. So I'm serving. Awesome. The program serves inside, inside. right now. Okay. The, there's many many steps that you have to cover to. Um, end up being able to serve them once they're released. Okay. And there's and I'm learning the whole ropes of it as you as know you're in, in real the, time. As yeah, in real yeah, time yeah. because it's not it's not something it's not something it's that I'm familiar system. with. It's a very complex system. Very complex. And mm-hmm. I like that challenge. And I've always liked um, building things. You know, building my own business has been a really exciting. So how long have you been building businesses for? Well, I mean, I started my firm in. 2007 eight. Okay. Um, and I went to graduate school and um, at FIT and I did the art market program. Okay. And um, oh, so I, you're all in. Like, I'm you all in. Went I really I got a master's like, in the art market. Okay. So, so and th- I did art history undergrad. Pure love. Yes. This is <laughs> and I did art history undergrad and I really really love art because it makes you it turns. Um, it makes you think uh, differently about everything, and so my problem solving and everything. Yes, tons of different different ways of entering into a problem and coming mm-hmm. to the solution, and that's why you know one day you know three, four, four, five years ago actually maybe I was I was thinking what can I do that's more. Um, authentic in okay. the art world um, not just you know dealing with you know selling art and, and the curatorial side which I love but like what can I do that's kind of uncomfortable that people maybe aren't necessarily it serving creates an impact that creates an time. impact that like I can actually build in the way that allows other people to get jobs and to platform other people because love I it. really really like collaborating yeah. and that's something that I've learned more and more um you know, building my own business is that, you know, you start off on your own uh-huh. and you can all get very, you know, you're working in this sort of like silo effect where you're mm-hmm. like thinking only in this general sense of like, how to do this specific thing. But I wanted to, to do offshoots of, of my work for a while and see it in different settings. Yeah. You know, so in a way I'm curating programs Yeah. and curating. This is as interesting of a setting as it gets. It's very, right? <laughs> it's very interesting and going and, and, you know, having been inside quite a bit. Um, you know, there's a lot of interesting things, but there's also a lot of um, really great, there's a lot of great things going on in terms yeah. of the, the program coordinators that are actually working yeah. to try to come up with interesting programs. And, you know, when I say mine's not our therapy, is that I'm really focused on, um, at first I started off with men, because okay. that was the program I was able to get. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, I developed the programs. That was the a slot I was, I was able to get. Yeah. And I was totally yeah. cool excited it. about starting that way. Yeah. But elevating women in the workplace has become a very, very big um, interest of mine, being a woman in the workplace myself. I mean, it's big in society right now as it is, too. It's like something that's finally being talked about, right? Yeah. Women in the workplace. Women in the workplace. And like, you know, there's, there's, when you think about all the constructs of how offices are set up, just in the ways that even they're heated, they're freezing, yeah. you know, even these little things, they, they serve to, um, it's sort of planned obsolescence or, or maybe uneducated thoughts about how, um, how women and men can, can work co- together. Co-exist. You know, there's certain different <laughs> worlds about, you know, a ways in which women work, um, that you know every 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 man and woman have both a masculine and feminine side yeah and there can be much more of uh, an even playing field of allowing both those to exist in an office environment okay um and so uh you know women ha- are and men are too but women also you know have intuition and empathy and they they, they so, tend to want to collaborate yeah um, and those different qualities need to exist with, you know, the same things like metrics and like, you know, just very black and white thinking, yeah. which I think on both sides. I mean, I yeah. have, I have worked in, I would say a masculine mode for, for most, most I look, I, you know, I look, you know, I look feminine. I have worked in a very, very masculine mode and I've done really great work, yeah. but I also have decided that I want to incorporate more of the feminine mode of working, which is you know, being open to creative programming and doing things that are um, through a lens of energetic principles and trying to bring more um, of a qualitative type of, of, of work yes. to it. And I also want, in, on a very practical level, I want to bring entrepreneurship to women who are incarcerated because 
I don't even know if they've had so much of exposure even to like having being told they can do meaningful work. Yeah. Like, no, I agree. W- and I'm actually, you know, researching as I go. Like, I, I'm asking the women. And also, and I, lack of opportunity as well. When you come out, you know, you, you have that strike against you, you know, of having that prison record. So if you can teach entrepreneurship before they even come out, you know, the, to be able to like build on your own. Like I said, is a is a social impact within itself. Well, entrepreneurship is a mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree and, with that. And it's a mindset. Agree it's with that. it's knowing. It's not self excluding. It's knowing that you have a certain it's self awareness. Well. It's knowing that you have a gift. It's knowing that the, that the value has to come from within. Um, you have to be able to confer value upon yourself, without expecting others to confer that value on your mm-hmm. on you first. You have to ask real hard questions of yourself. Are you operating from a sense of truth? Mm-hmm. This is my my version of entrepreneurship, yeah. which I think brings greater um, prosperity and you could, you know, say that word is uh, greater, you know, happiness. A- really happiness and also greater financial are. health. Yeah. I mean, you could actually make more money if you work from a more authentic yeah. um from a truth point. From a truth point. I, I always feel you do, like it, you make better products. You your your programming is more in tune mm-hmm. with the needs of others, and you know even in my own business, I've seen. I mean, I've grown every single year since I've been working in this business, Amazing. and I have seen even more astronomical growth within the framework of my business that is come when I have switched my mindset. Okay. So. I'm working on a, on one level, which is teaching women in general who are incarcerated that they can even think about having um, their own businesses, or they could even think about having biz- businesses that respect them yeah. for who they are. And I am fully committed to um, uh, uh, breaking down or knocking on doors that make others uncomfortable mm. including myself <laughs> and I think that that is that brings me a lot I know I work harder that way yeah so the more uncomfortable the situation is I'm likely to probably do it and then not only that <laughs> but like you have a focal point it's yeah like, I have a focal know, point yeah so that so did you start a foundation around that as well or was it okay. something that you kind of incorporated together so so when I had my epiphany um, five years ago, as I said, that I wanted to do something more meaningful. And the steps that I took were to first just get in. And okay. so I, a couple of things that happened to me that I had to make decisions about was um, I had to become, to, in order to maybe get the fast track to do programming inside of Rikers, there was a, there's a um, sort of a designation called Minority Women Business Enterprise. Um, I heard, you're the second person that really? mentioned this. Well, yeah, I had a I had a previous guest. I called him the Power Couple, um, and <laughs> I it meet was them. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. they were really good. He's he's actually an art uh, gallery owner out in Brooklyn, so Ooh, maybe it would okay. be a great introduction. Nice but um, his wife was he she had mentioned um, minority grants that they give for entrepreneur uh, oh. women, women, minority women, and everything. So that's something that she mentioned. Second time that I heard that. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, well, these, are, <laughs> these kinds of connections are what's happening right now. Um, no, so this, this, this designation helped to get something called procurement where, I, okay. where I'm able to come in and serve versus a, a vendor that's not outside, yeah. uh, that's, that's outside of this designation. And, you know, when I, when I did all the paperwork and I um, became, I, the, I, that clicked that I became certified as Minority Women Business Enterprise, I think I fully recognized that there is an otherness that I'm also working in is you know that being a woman in business is minority is is a minority Agreed. and and I've seen that very much now having had a baby I mm-hmm. had a baby um he's 12 months now it's easier and um when I had a baby I recognized how much of a minority I actually am okay <laughs> yeah because I had this I, I I realized that I wanted to work more in a feminine mode which was just as strong if not stronger than my masculine mode because the masculine mode was antithetical to me for all the years that I was working I was just grinding it out I loved what I was doing but I was grinding it the way I was coming at problems was different I was I was getting good solutions but I think it could have been much more of a of a, a healthier way yeah. of more to, my masculine, more to me yeah, yeah. you know more I was you. ignoring me mm-hmm. in the picture and I know you adapted to your environment though you, I mean to be successful you do have to adapt to your very environment very true Although that, it's not something that you would be normally accustomed to or happy with, but oh, I mean, come on, the corporate world—that's all about you know molding to one thing. Yeah. 
Um, and I do believe that you, no matter where you go, you have to be adaptable. Agreed. But I think that there are there's was when these it's spun too much towards one way that the adaptation becomes so off kilt that it's too you have to go way swing the pendulum way too yeah. so far yeah. that you can't work in your own power. And that is is a very covert way of um, getting women out of the workplace. Yeah. And I can tell you that if I didn't have my own business, I would ma- probably not. That's be an employed. interesting perspective because I I mean I don't think like a lot of people would even look at it that way. Yeah, I mean I actually wonder if I would be employed. I don't think yeah. there's no way I breastfed. I just finished this week breastfeeding, yeah. which is a whole other thing, and all the hormones that go around. Oh, so it. you're like literally like a newborn newborn. Like. I live. Yeah, I mean, oh, okay. I've been, like, I have like birth. A, essentially yeah. Essentially. <laughs> oh, I mean, this whole year, this I'm, I'm a, only thinking that the baby's maybe like a year old. Jeez. No, he is a year old. But oh, I he's a year old. For a year. Oh wow. Which okay. is, I know. Jeez. And some people do it even more. <laughs> yeah. You know, and um, I, at what point does the pump get in like? I was I pumped everywhere. Okay, I oh, pumped really on. I, I mean, pump. it's it's a thing. Okay. You know, I mean, and it's not easy. You, your life is given over to the pump, <laughs> and the pump, and and to the fact that I actually literally this is this is my freedom. So you can think about many levels of our incarceration. By the way, um, taking care of my baby has been so rewarding, and I've never felt incarcerated. But what I felt, I'm just trying to make a nice segue here. What I felt <laughs> is, is that I I have had my time cued to his every need mm. while being while building my business, business. while doing this reframe while being program, a wife while being a wife yeah and all these things are happening simultaneously and so you talk about women being multi I can no, multitask no. Women, I, I, I've always said this I mean even obviously just respect to my mom but like women's jobs are just harder I mean yes a male in, in the workplace it's tough and yeah whatever but we don't it's not the 24-7 job of being a mom yeah like yeah dads were always there but like we're not waking up at four in the morning three yeah. in the morning you know breastfeeding yeah and then getting up to go to work exactly at six seven a.m no, so yeah. no it's it's definitely um something that more men should think about well I, and um, i think that that, when that masculinity it, comes education into play. is everything yeah. and i fully believe that we are in this time where you can you know, edu- people are receptive to education. Mm-hmm. I also want to take, I take a very positive spin on everything. I do not work in the sense of, um, you know, men Women are... Women are better. Yeah, yeah. no. Because yeah. what does that do? Yeah, it's what just causes causing separation. No, we, we, there needs to, but there does, definitely needs to be, especially with each individual woman, she needs to raise her awareness up that, that sh- there are power, there are power centers that she can tap into as, yeah. as a woman that don't necessarily exist within men. Men are tapping into their power centers. Um, and what they, she needs to ask what those are. Every woman will have a different answer. Yeah. And doesn't have to compromise yourself as well. No, it doesn't have to. Like I you mean, can in kind fact, of meet it, in the middle. It, it brings know? yourself up because there's a lot of women that self-exclude not knowing okay. that they can, you know, actually work from a better place. They don't have to work in the style of a man. Agreed. Okay. So anyway, getting back to what this might be for women who are incarcerated. Yeah. Is that the women? Um, so when I found, when I recognized that I wanted to do something more, I became MWBE um, okay. certified. Um, I went in and I started doing the programming and I thought, well, there has to be like, I have to do something. I mean, I can't just go in and teach them these things. Like that's like baiting, you know? And also I'm like, I want to see, you know, going in there and it's, it is difficult. It takes me hours to get in there and out. Um, you know, it's a, essentially you're you're having them unlearn and relearn, which is like yeah. Well, you know, I never, you know, I guess I thought it's right because I'm having to, um, I'm having to confront their biggest myths about themselves. And stereotypes. Their stereotype. First mm-hmm. of all, the accepting terms that they were given before they got incarcerated. Mm-hmm. Now the terms that are mapped While on top there. of that. Mm. Um, and you know, sometimes we all live in the terms that we've been given. Agreed. You know, if I were to and if I were to live in the term of you know whatever, um, you know, I'm this whether it's I'm a woman in business and I can only do so much, or whether it's the terms that even you know the nicknames you get as a child, <laughs> those things actually can affect you. Believe Agreed. it or not, you have to confront no, it's, it's so certain certain um, the, the <clears throat> inbound messages come to you. Those need to be fully evaluated. Oh, but they need to be, they need to be evaluated. Mm-hmm. Inbound messages, mm-hmm. you better ask yourself if you're yeah. accepting that. Because I bet you a million dollars, you get... Uh, is it people, your voice or somebody else's yeah. voice that you're hearing? And that's, it's so and true. I, I mean, that's our job, is to figure out what our real voice is. Yeah. And so I with women, so I, I am, I am, I'm, I'm understand women because I happen to be one. 
<laughs> so and um, so I am working on a full range of women because I come from one environment. I have had my um, experiences of being the other in in society, not just being a woman, but just by constructs of what happened in my childhood. Um, and I've also had you know great um, sort of access to opportunities like education. Yeah. Um, but. A lot of the women that I'm confronting have had actually that because some of them have are in there for certain reasons, but they, so they've had successful businesses, and some of them have never even had uh, this idea they could even make money. Yeah. So you know, giving getting into the breaking down, like you know, some of their preconceived notions mm-hmm. of themselves, um, is what I'm now focusing on. So I work with the men now. I'm working with the women. This is my second year of working awesome. with women coming up. Um, I'm just you- in the procurement process right now. You literally chose the the most complex system to teach and just want to let you know this right now. But that's amazing. Though. I mean, it, the social impact that's going to come out of it is... And I never thought I'm a teacher. Amazing. I'm an art consultant. <laughs> you so, started from art consulting. So, but believe it or not, I mean, even as an art consultant, I mean, whatever industry that you're in, um, you eventually become... I'm taking of it. what I'm doing is I'm, taking, I'm doing some it. alchemy here. I'm taking all the yeah. all the resources, all the people I've met, and I want and I'm I'm helping raise them up in their voices and all the things they're doing in their various work. And I'm so I've been bringing people in from the art community to speak to them about jobs and anything from art handling, shipping. But we'll get a little bit more. We're being a little theoretical, but we'll get, but I'm going to tell you like the tangible things are you know real world skills that you yeah. know you can apply. And what I thought was so good about it is that if you're doing this like kind of you know, blue collar work or whatever, you know, like hanging things on the wall, that's like labor, but you're with your curators you're and networking. you're meeting with the people and you're networking and networking is everything. Yeah. It's not, you know, who you know yeah. is a big deal. And, and feel getting, like you and, belong there. And, and, and feeling, all, and feeling, feeling like, like you, you are, there. have a right to be there. Yeah. And, um, you know, so these are the, the things that I wonder again I'm going through the same process with these women is you know even when I went to an art fair one time there was there was on an island and they had no pumping room and I had yeah. my yes. my breast pump there and I had to figure out where to go and they had like you know bathrooms that were not for this activity okay. and then I ended up in the, in the um, first aid station which was like a closet and then people were coming in and out of it and you're exposed so you're just, like trying to it was very not it's time. not a very and I'm a professional I'm yeah. working you know yeah. like and so and it's also there's a million women on this island who are attending the show the art fair and who work in the art world so yeah. the fact there was no room for, that. for this activity yeah. like I had to think there was I guess they're thinking I mean their way of thinking I would assume is just like there's such a smaller minority group of like women who are going to be pumping during an art show or yeah like exactly that. so it, it doesn't come to play but I but it's totally also like you know there's probably saying. a smaller minority of people who are going to have like some sort of a first a aid million problem dollars for, or a million dollars or for a piece for, of art well yeah no that's not <laughs> that's actually not a small situation <laughs> but you know how many how many people are um, you know having a huge medical emergencies? Sure. You know, but there there are there needs to be some sort of a privacy room, yeah. right? Some sort of privacy room for some activity. Um, and um, so now, where do you stand as far as your foundations? Um, so okay, on so social we're media? in a, we're in a very okay, so we're in a very interesting pivot point. I've now I've I've recognized that after doing the programming and finding it so invigorating and 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 seeing it sort of gel that. You know, this year I had to ask myself, you know, other than my time sink and some, you know, money from my own business that I've been putting forward to reframe uh, the, the program, is that how, what do I do? And I was like, you know, I'm going to hire somebody to help me bring this into the next era. And so we're in the process. I have a fiscal sponsor now that the, the, the reframe Amazing. foundation, it's become a foundation Amazing. as a fiscal sponsor. Thank you. It's very exciting. And, um, the, uh, the fiscal sponsor um, is Remy Ma Foundation. Um, Remy Ma, the artist. Remy Ma, the artist. For the, the foundation. New Yorkers that are listening, yeah. they definitely know uh, who she is. Yeah, so, so awesome. super awesome. That's great. Super awesome. I mean, that's an amazing I, I want to tell get, you that Remy Ma just had a baby, and yep. I looked at her Instagram and was blown away by the energy of, as a woman that mm-hmm. she presented. And... Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, I really believe in learning about the good qualities in people. Absolutely. And, um, 
ever and so the the I and hired a consultant to bring this into the next chapter, and he also um, um, was incarcerated for a really long time. Oh wow! And I okay. would let him tell you his own story, but um, his name is Yusuf uh, Under Wiley. And um, he has helped um, raise foundations, um, okay. including in organizations, 501c3s, um, including his own. And he's the connection point to Remy Ma. Okay. Um, and the work he's doing for their foundation is excellent. And That's so awesome. now we have just, now I'm, I'm moving the reframe program from just being like a, a page under my website, my, my Lydia Cutco Art Consulting website, to... Um, its own website, okay. and that's coming out with you know where you can you can receive donations. Awesome. Um, you know we're Speaking raising seed money now. We're raising seed money. You know pitch decks. Um, I'm going to be out there pitching, um, and um, so and it has its own Instagram now. The the Reframe Foundation. Oh, nice. So Reframe okay. Reframing is 2019, and my word for the year is foundation. Foundation or like you know Love you can it. do only very good work if you build a foundation in your mind your mindset has to be about you know structures and working within one central focus yeah. and so all the stuff with my my businesses from my art consulting um to this is about bringing focus and you know i i am taking one more leap which is um launching a product line the called um new female office Products okay. for women in the workplace, okay. and with a portion of proceeds going to reframe. Amazing. So Amazing. I'm also trying to create the eco art, the ecosystem. Ecosystem. So the that thing. like you the know, whole brand yes, the whole brand, so that I can actually work with you know artists to make limited edition prints. Yes. Which is actually in process right now. Amazing. Working with a really cool artist um, to make a. A print that kind of is with the idea of elevating women in the workplace, even non-incarcerated women. Yeah. You know, they could buy that, and um, you know, also objects and wearables, like where anything from like a, a bracelet. You know, we're talking to one. I can't actually can't release it quite yet. No, that's cool. uh, you'll have to stay tuned. I can't tell you <laughs> too much tuned, about it because tuned. she's like a and fine artist. And plug she's... in your podcast too. Yeah. You, oh you yeah. So the, I also have a podcast going, which with um, I have to plug in because. This guy right here, and then (laughs) behind this uh, camera here, um, I have a team of uh, you guys, um, you know, realizing, yeah, uh, you know, amplifying my voice, amplifying Reframe's voice, bringing out the message, um, allowing, um, you know, some growth to happen and to to meet a new group of people. Um, And so it's called New Female Office, the New Female Office, and it is in the process of going on iTunes. And we're helping her out with that. Yeah, we're helping her out. (laughs) And we're going to be interviewing more people. Awesome. Um, I'm excited. I'm I'm, I'm really excited. I'm all for your foundation. I love it. I mean, it's where society is going. I mean, I became more aware of, like, female empowerment and everything. I mean, I have a little girl. I'm raising a daughter. She's 10 years old. And, like, obviously, raising a 10-year-old in this society is, like... You're against a lot. I mean, you know, you're against the stereotypes of having to be beautiful and long hair and all this other stuff. I know. And the competitiveness. And I'm just like, It's so distracting. Be happy with that mirror. Yeah. And then everything else will fall into play. Yeah. And, you know, I, I see. That's why I said with you and what you're teaching and the system that you're in, I see it within just a child. So I can imagine an adult that has to relearn and unlearn everything. So That must I'm, be very I'm exotic to be a I'm, father of a daughter right now. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I'm against the Kardashians right now. Yeah. And I, I don't win. But no, I think that's a really. I think that you. Well, I think I think we all can learn to take positions and things to be open to other people. But you know, you have to you have to take a position in something. And I've never been afraid to, um, you know, actually say, you know, put put my ask out there, um, and. People can, can you know, and I do listen for, you know, feedback and, like, mm. what I can do. And I'm getting better and better and better at it. And doing all of this work is, um, you know, bringing me closer to the truth. Like, what, what gifts and what kind of um, modes do I best work yeah. in and how I can keep They're gonna refining see the that so I can do better. Yeah. They're going to see the intent. So, I mean, yeah. it, it speaks freely within itself. So, I'll uh, take it. I'll take the intent and, uh, and we'll keep going. 
So before we go, though, you want to leave the audience with a little message for any upcoming, aside from your podcast, anything upcoming for well, your foundation that they should stay out for? I mean, I really like I really like the audience to go to at Reframe Foundation yes. and to like it, um, to start commenting. Um, we'll make sure to put it up there somewhere in Thailand. Yeah, here, I don't know. go at Reframe <laughs> Foundation um, if you want to learn how to get involved um and then through there i'll you know be connecting in new female office podcast you know so that will kind of be part of a post or a story and then um you know if you if you're an artist or you're looking to connect with this great community in new york and around i mean i would i'd love to give you um, direction on, on who to connect with you know because it's, it's about meeting people and about hearing other voices but it's also figuring out your own voice because if you know your own voice then I really believe that violence, anger those things cease you have to know who you are you have to ground yourself you have to you know in in kundalini yoga the root lock you have to ground that aura and be able to deal with the chaos and all the messages that are coming at you you know this inbound stuff you know question it you know, take it, package it up, and make it what's you know best to you. So that's Absolutely. my awesome. that's my tip. No, no, that's the tip. <laughs> that's my tip for 2019. <laughs> wow, I'm done. It's over. And guys, as always, thank you so much for listening to the J Team Brand Podcast. And as always, comment, please comment, share, like, subscribe, and um, I hope you take some value out of this. Love you guys. Take thank care. you. All right.